All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are taking a look at an interesting parts mod that I I just saw on the uh, Kerbal Spaceport earlier today before recording. And so, if we just jump into our Kotobo Space Program save here, now I am I'm really excited about this thing. Uh, now, what we're going to be looking at today is the Kerbin Shuttle Orbiter System by uh, forum user slash spaceport user Hell Driver. Now, it also has a compilation of a variety of other mods in this thing, but what it produces is an orbiter orbital shuttle. And we can see one of the parts right there, the <laughs> front of the shuttle. But let's actually load up the pre-built one here, just so we don't have to mess around with all that. What was it called again? There we go, KSO version 004. Let's load that up. And take a look at the beauty that is this little Kerbin mini shuttle. And if you will have noticed there, the uh, doors actually open and close. You have cargo bay doors. So you can load in a satellite in here or take up parts for a space station much like you would with uh, a real life shuttle mission if we, you know, still used shuttles. Uh, but yeah, this, this whole thing is just a, a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. I, I love it. Now there have been shuttle mods in the past and they've been pretty good, but quite honestly, this is probably my favorite that I've ever seen, which is why I'm showing it here today. When I saw it on the spaceport, I just, I fell in love with it. Now, this thing comes with a whole variety of parts that we're going to go through here real quick. The first, of course, is the KSO cockpit. Now, this is the, well cockpit for the ship. It's pretty self-explanatory there. And uh, yeah, it does come with SAS and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, pretty standard things. It does actually have some built-in RCS thrusters, which is wonderful. And you can actually see those uh, up on the front there, those little ports and all, which is quite fun. And of course, that's all that's in that section. We move on to propulsion. We have these glorious liquid fuel boosters by Orbits Aerospace, and of course the Thrustmax external tank, also by no, by well by manufacturer Thrustmax. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful large fuel tank there. And we also have the engine mount in the back, which makes up of course the back of the shuttle here, where you put on the Omnimax 40T engines and the Thrustmax 200, which if we kind of Zoom in there, you can see down at the bottom. We've got, uh, looks like three of these Thrust Max and two of the Omnimax. Yeah, there we go, that is correct. So, you yeah, know, we've got some nice uh, thrust with these engines, should be quite nice. And in control, we have the KSO Avionics, which is, well, you know, your standard sort of SAS reaction wheel stuff, all of that. I'm not actually entirely sure where it is. In relation to the rest of the stuff, I'm guessing it's like in between one of these parts. That would be my guess. Let's pop open that. Does that, uh, no. Oh, I broke things. I definitely broke things. You know what? Let's reload that. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing it's in between one of the parts somewhere. Um, hopefully, if not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, moving on from the control with the structural... We have the cargo bay here, which again is absolutely gorgeous. You've got the wonderful bay doors that open, and you do have two points inside here at the front and at the back where you can connect other things. So if we just grab a random part here, you can put it there or put it th there. There you go. So inside here, you could put a little separ a separator and a satellite that you could build off of it or something else along those lines. And when you get into space, just release it. That would be fun. Now, what we also have in here is the TT-70, which is its own little decouplers here. You can see on the side of the fuel tank, we got one right there and another right there. So we've got a, you know, some new decouplers, and they are pretty cool looking. Small, though. Unusually small, but they... They work, so I'm happy. I like them. <laughs> and then in aerodynamics, we've got a whole lot of stuff here. We've got uh, left elevon, left wing. We've got the uh, radome up in the front, which is, you know, the little nose cone there, which apparently 
Has electrical charge. Interesting. I didn't notice that before. I've also got the tail plane down in the bottom in the back right here. Kind of hard to see there. And then, of course, the right section of all of those wing parts. Just quite interesting. So we've got the one wing here, that full wing, and then that small bit, uh, what do they call it, Elevon? Yes, the right Elevon there. All quite interesting. And in utility, we have external radio cameras that we can add to it. I don't actually see any that have been attached to it in here. Um, I'm not actually entirely sure if they are working in this version, but you know what? Let's throw one on. Whoa, oh, haha. <laughs> Hello, we've, we're apparently scanning things. That is awesome. So yeah, you can attach that anywhere for a camera view. I'm intrigued how it works on here, so let's just pop one on the top of this thing. <laughs> then you have a custom docking module, which is cool. You can put it, if we zoom in a bit on the docking bay, you can pop, pop it into here. And if you rotate it, actually we'll place it in there, you'll have a docking port on the top and a docking port on the side, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. But that's what it looks like, having those two discs. If you look at the other sides, it doesn't have that radial disc there, so I'm uh, <laughs> assuming that's the case. Uh, it'll be something interesting to find out on a later mission. So it could be cool. You could bring up a part for a space station or whatever. I'm actually curious as to exactly how big this is. So you couldn't fit a habitation module in that. Well, technically you could. Huh. I don't think you'd ever be able to release it, but it does actually fit a habitation module. It's slightly poking out the sides though. Let's remove that. That does not need to be in there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you could add all sorts of other smaller parts in there. So maybe not the, uh, oh, is that the two meter size, I think? Uh, you could fit in smaller things. Now, right now, there isn't any... Oh, actually, still here in Utility, we have all the landing gears here. So we got the right main, nose, and left main. And if you look, they actually fit in to the rest of the model there, there, and over there. It's quite cool. All very, very sleek. I like it. And now, right now, there isn't anything new in the science area, but they will add it in the future. They plan on adding in phase two and in future phases of the mod, multiple additional things to fit in here. Uh, they're working on a science module to, that'll fit inside here, even a rover and things like that that'll fit inside the shuttle here, which is a very, very cool. Uh, I like the idea of having additional custom-made things for this. And in phase two, they're even working on things like a smoke particle replacer for the engines so that it looks a bit nicer, I guess. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but yeah, I, I've been seeing a lot of those on the forums recently of people adding in new particle effects for the rockets and things like that. But if we close this up, I actually want to uh, launch this baby up and see how it does. And also, of course, take a look at the internal views because this thing has a whole, whole internal view here. Why is it showing that there's a hitchhiker capsule still in here? Is that supposed to be? Oh, you know what? We're gonna... Oh, I think there is because there's the cockpit and then there is a crew module, which I guess perhaps that's just showing that. So you know what? Let's load in too, just to find out. I'm, I'm hoping that's the case and that I didn't accidentally break something. I did get rid of that hitchhiker can. Huh. Which what is? Let's let's actually just take a look at that. Uh, it's PD-10 hitchhiker storage container. Hmm. You know what? What the heck? Let's launch. See what happens. <laughs> and yeah, here we go. Let's just go for it. Now I'm I'm not gonna get this baby too high up. I'm just gonna try and get it maybe up to about 75,000 kilometers. I think that'd be good. Whoa. Oh, I think we're having an issue, some sort of conflict somewhere, as I am... The world isn't loading. We are currently, technically, in nowhere. My word, we're in the void. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording and see what happened. Alright, and we are back. Uh, the issue... I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, it was that habitation module for some reason. 
the game glitched thinking that it was still on the craft, even though I did chuck it and got rid of it. It thought it was still there and it crashed the whole thing. So I reloaded the craft file, brought it back in fresh. So we should, should be good. But while on the launch pad, I just wanna show off a few things here. First off, if we right click here, you'll notice we've got some interesting things like a built-in ladder so that you can eventually land this baby, hopefully on a runway, and uh, actually get your crew back out of it or back into it, whatever you want. You also have cabin lights, which you can turn on, so you get the nice, beautiful glow of the lights there. Turn those back off, and of course, it is, does have its own built-in RCS, which is very useful. And let's, let's go and look at the beautiful internal view. I've been waiting for this part, as it has been the thing I've been waiting for most. I mean, just look at all this. It's just so beautifully put together with so much detail and you have a functioning HUD up at the top. Kind of hard to see if you're flying from back here, but I assume, yeah, if you're uh, double click on the window to focus it there and then kind of zoom in a bit, uh, that could be very, very useful when trying to land this thing after returning from orbit. And if we uh, come back here, now, like I said earlier, this does use the raster prop monitor, so we do have all these wonderful options, so we can grab that there, which is uh, actually the same stuff that's being displayed on the HUD. Very cool, let's bring up orbital info on this one. And uh, over here, we'll bring up whatever that is. Ah, that sort of information, lovely. Let's uh, bring up stuff over on that one. Let's switch uh, our guys let's see I want to you there we go so you can play around with these we've got uh, which one do I have that's landing assistant ah that's just another nav ball and we've got all sorts of info on these oh very cool so that's all your fuel mission info Oh, a chart uh, tracking all your altitude. Any cameras that you have on here? Oh, ah, we do have some built-in cameras. Oh, look at these. That is just beautiful. Oh, we've got the one, oh, now that. That I think is my favorite. That is actually showing us inside the cargo hold. We've got that on top of the rocket. Uh, another one on there. No signal, no signal. Oh, then our docking camera, uh, which uh, our docking camera is in here inside the cargo hold, so not the most useful. And what else do we have? Target, and then, oh, plugins. So this is compatible apparently with ScanSat and Smart ASS. Uh, so you can uh, use this with other systems. That is cool, I like that. We've got a home menu put it to sleep, bring it back up, and bring up that altitude menu. Oh, I, uh, oh you gotta love the raster prop monitor stuff. Uh, but you also have uh, other options for different views. If we go back out and go to one of the guys in the back, again, we've just got all the wonderful detail here, medical supplies. And if you look for, can I see it? Ah, there it is. If you look for that hatch, it takes us back to this crew section in the back which, uh, the, this whole six people in total, so four up in the cockpit and then two in the back here. And these guys are in the crew compartment. And then once you're done looking at them, uh, with whatever in the world they're doing. Oh, what do they have back here? They've got, uh, data discs, lenses, UV supplies, lovely. No stepping there. Oh, the lavatory. Which, actually, the lavatory is then what you, I believe, click, oh no, that's not what you click on. Ah, it's that hatch up there. This hatch on the roof, you double click that and it brings you to the very back of the cockpit here. So we get this rear view, which is awesome. And if, uh, well, if you want to use this for some sort of machinima, I mean, you got a lot of good camera angles for things. And should be able to click that. Yep, right there. Oh my God, we're right in his head. <laughs> um, hi, <laughs> that's, that's a little disturbing. Let's, let's, uh, Let's get out of that view. There we go. <laughs> so a lot of cool camera options, especially on the camera views on the raster prop monitor. That is, that is very cool. I, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. I like it. 
So, what we're going to do, though, is uh, take off now, try and get this thing into an orbit and play around with it in space and bring it back down. So let's launch And three, two, one, mark. Oh, 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 God, okay. Oh, let's, let's redo that. <laughs> okay, it wanted to really tilt on its back there. That's, that's strange. All right, maybe we should turn on the SAS. And I'm gonna put these down here. I always hate when they have it in a separate thing. I just like everything to go off at once. So in three, two, one, go. Oh no, it's just wanting to roll. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. That is very interesting indeed. Let's, hmm, revert to launch. That is strange. It keeps wanting to roll backwards. Perhaps I shouldn't have the SAS on. So let's keep, leave that off. And maybe we do need to start the engines on this one to get it a little warmed up first. So let's bring them on and launch. Oh, oh yeah, and you gotta kinda tilt this baby forward a bit because it wants to move. It wants to move a lot. Oh my, oh my. Uh, let's turn on the SAS now. <laughs> so it's a little bit interesting to try and uh, take off. But, uh, it is still quite cool, though. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Okay, let's... Let's, uh, move this thing. It keeps wanting to tilt forward. There we go. It's staying stable there. I was gonna try and launch it, uh, in that direction. Over that way, like I normally do. But I do not want to mess around too much with this. <laughs> For safety's sake, let's just get this baby into space and see what happens from there. Hello, gentlemen, you're all kind of freaking out in there. Lovely. Let's uh, sort of roll it a bit. Yeah, this is uh, yee, a little bit interesting, but cool, I like it, I do like it. Beautiful effects. Quite lovely, nice big flames coming off of that thing. Wow, really big flames actually coming off of that thing. <laughs> oh, very cool, I like it. Let's, uh, I'm actually going to keep it, oh, you know what, let's go to his view. Oh no, all these turned off. Let's go to that camera. No, that camera. Oh, we are in space, I guess. Wow, look at that. Uh, all right. Everything's looking good, though, even though it is a night launch. Those engines just went out, so let's drop those. And let's head back out here to this view. Make sure we're not, <laughs> oh, going to roll or anything like that. Oh, I have not been doing any sort of gravity turn on this at all. So <laughs> let's, let's start that. This is very twitchy on its movement for flying. Very, very twitchy. Let's go out to the map. I'm already past the point I wanted to go to in space for the actual altitude. So let's just kind of burn a while at uh, sort of that angle just to try and widen this a bit. <laughs> yeah, this looks good, because we'll actually bring down our orbit a little bit doing it this way, and widen it just a little bit under the horizon. That should work well. And what is my fuel at? Pretty good. Now, we've got some fuel back here in the engine mount, but of course, most of it is in this external tank, which is nice. So let's... Eh, uh, we should almost be good on this. I'm just going to bring it down to about 75,000 kilometers. Or 75 kilometers, rather. Or probably more around 80. Oh, wow, this is... You know what, let's just stop it there. Add our maneuver node. Okay, that's, that's a bit much. But, uh, yeah, we need to start burning it, though, in a second. Let's bring that down a bit more and yeah it should just be burning here in just a few seconds we're actually pretty much on our burn point already that is good be able to circularize this thing pretty easily I think should be good and oh yeah there we go we actually should have been burning a few seconds ago but yeah we should be good kind of hard to see my capsule symbol with the clouds there Though, worth it, those clouds are beautiful. Oop, okay, let's equalize that out a bit. Hmm. 
I think the burn estimate is a bit off on this one. It seems... Seems to be fluctuating a bit more than I would like. So perhaps it's not calculating it quite correctly with uh, these custom engines, perhaps? That is a possibility. Oh, we need to be up here following this nav point. Because, yeah, we are... Ooh, we... Now we'll get an orbit. It's just going to be a little screwy of one. A little bit more screwy than we expected. But uh, it'll still work. It'll still work. There we go. We have an orbit. Lovely. And what is our fuel? Oh my. <laughs> we're we're essentially out of fuel. Pretty much. That is... That is good. All right, let's go back into the cockpit here. I'm a little bummed that these reset themselves, but let's take a look at our cameras. Space, planet, that is a beautiful shot. Another beautiful shot. I wonder, can we... Hmm. I'm kind of doubting it, but I'm wondering if there's any way to open up the cargo bay from in here. I'm so... so seriously doubting it, but you know, you never know. This is a very, very detailed cockpit. Much more detailed than I expected from this whole thing, but let's let's open it up and go back into that IVA view. Oh, see, it kept the cameras that time. That's interesting. I wonder why it didn't earlier. That is, I love that camera, and that would be so much fun to have while uh, you got a satellite in there, and of course you could do the staging while you're still in this cockpit view, so you could just Blow this thing right away so you're good to go and watch your satellite float away. And then go back to uh, that view to watch it float up. It'd be beautiful. We've still got that camera view. And that one. Ooh, I can actually seem to <laughs> highlight those. No signal. All right, let's... Oh, no signal on the docking cam. I wonder if it's because we have no target. Interesting. Yeah, all this is quite cool. Now, I just noticed that zoom. Do we actually have the ability to zoom on these? It does not appear so. That doesn't seem to be doing anything like that. Of course, escapes. All good. I love the heads-up display. That is very cool. Let's take a look outside. The whole thing, the whole thing is just absolutely beautiful. Now, I originally was going to try and land this thing back at the Kerbal Space Center, but I do not see that happening, honestly, for two reasons. One, we went the opposite direction that I wanted to be going, uh, which right there already screws me up. And two, if you've watched any of my episodes with me trying to land a plane, you know that never goes well. I think we will just try and re-enter the atmosphere and uh, have a little fun with it just to see what the effects look like and how this thing flies a bit. But, I, yeah, we're not actually going to be landing anywhere with my horrible, horrible abilities. So let's just time accelerate till we're back on the light side of the planet. See all the glorious city lights in the background there? Fast forward. There we go. That's as far as we can, or as fast, rather, as we can fast forward. And, uh, yeah, almost, almost. There we go. And let's just deorbit this thing. Turn off our SAS, turn on RCS so we can actually move around for once. It's uh, good to have that. Actually, it's always good to have it. I just always forget to have it. <laughs> let's just uh, start deorbiting this thing should be fun. There we go. Oh, there goes the fuel in those engines. Oh god, that isn't all the fuel, is it? Uh, let's turn back on our RCS. Oh yeah, that's that's the fuel tank gone. <laughs> let's turn to docking mode and sort of move ourselves away from this a bit. Oh, did it not detach? Oh, no, it did, it did. It's just kind of holding on to us a bit. Let's... Come on, let's, uh... No, 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 our SAS off. There we go. There we go. I think I'm shaking myself free. All right, so that did not detach quite how I would have liked. Actually, it still seems to be clinging on a bit. 
There we go. Come on. Move away. Move away. Wow, it is not wanting to. <laughs> oh, it's 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 not going well. Not going well at all for us. Okay, let's This is this is not good. It seems to be wanting to stay attached. Which is strange. I, I really don't like this. That's not a good thing for it to be doing. Um, we are essentially spinning out of control now, which is not good either. <laughs> oh, the docking port has detached. We no longer have a docking port. Oh, this is all going horribly wrong. Horribly, horribly wrong. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, very, very wrong. And we are completely out of all fuel. Let's just close the cargo bay with the docking port still in there. I don't understand why this is clinging to us. Hmm. Seems to have perhaps clipped inside, or if we're just rolling to our doom together. Yep, rolling to our doom together. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, let's just uh, turn that off and fall to our doom. But, uh, yeah, this, this is a very cool mod. If you are a better pilot than me, you probably could get that thing up into orbit with uh, more fuel. As, yeah, we we did not have a whole lot to use that thing. Though, again, you have the cargo bay, so you could always put an additional fuel tank on the inside. And hopefully, it won't attach to you like this one will. <laughs> but, you know what? Oh, well, uh, I'm having fun with it. It is quite cool. And a whole lot of fun. I do I do really like this thing. Even if it is a little screwy. Hmm. But yeah, that really does not hold a whole lot of fuel in there. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually going to end the episode here while we're spiraling to our doom. I wonder if those cameras are still working. I was going to try and take this thing off or see how it flies. But uh, that... That does not appear like it's going to be happening. But I would definitely say to give this mod a go. It is just gorgeous. The The shuttle itself is amazingly built. The detail in the interior is just glorious. I wonder actually if I turn on the lights. Uh, there we go. And then go on the... in here... Nah, it doesn't really seem to have changed the brightness. I was wondering if it might change the lights inside. It does not appear to, though. Uh, but yeah, it, it's beautifully detailed. A lot of work has been done on this thing. It's got a beautiful... Whoa. There's the fuel tank. Beautiful <laughs> bits for control, like the HUD. All the wonderful raster prop mod bits here and there for the glass cockpit. It is just glorious. I would say to give it a try. Uh, links, of course, will be in the description as always. And once again, this has been the Kerbin Shuttle Orbiter System by Spaceport slash forum user Hell Driver. And this shuttle is currently plummeting to its doom because I'm an awful pilot. So, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. And, of course, that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.